So, Nigel Ogle, we're here at Tawhiti Museum, South Taranaki, just outside of Hawara in New Zealand. Right. Um, you're known locally um, as an artist, a modeler, um, and I guess to a certain degree that's where a, a lot of the displays in the museum have come from, that, that background. Yep. Just tell me a little bit about the museum. How did you end up being here? An opening. A, a, a what, building. What, what's the summary history? <laughs> a building made it possible. A good old dairy factory yep. um, obtained very cheaply. Um, and then just sort of thought, well, I'll collect some old bits and pieces because there's a lot of space here. Right. And uh, that, that sort of happened overlapping with the teaching for a while mm. and then decided to go making pottery. Well, that was taken away from me with the cheap pottery that's now on the market. So mm. it was the other option was the, it was the uh, collection of machinery and wagons and all that sort of thing, farming type stuff that was, in the, was building up rapidly in the museum. Mm. In, well, then it became the museum in, inside the building. And then I uh, sort of started looking more critical at what other museums were doing and what, what worked and what I didn't think worked in terms of you know, visitors coming through if it was going to pay its way. Yeah. And sort of got into the modelling side, right. um, both in full size figures down to very small scale figures and in between. And yeah. uh, the one behind us here is 132nd scale, which is a scale I use a lot, but I use quite a few scales. Mm -hmm. And also use them in perspective, so that you know, bigger in the front, one sixth back to and about one seventy fifth at the back. Right, so, so you get that forced perspective, perspective, and that works well. But um, yeah, it's very much the art side of it that I probably enjoy. Well, it is the part I enjoy probably the most. Um, mm. Sort of, you do still collect things as people bring them in, and mm. some wonderful things arrive. But yeah, we've found that it's it's the the models, the dioramas people comment on, you know, when people are coming out, they say, oh, look, do you make this, do you make that, how do you get these, where do you find those? And it's not, they're not talking about the collection as such, although they do a lot with the machinery side of it, yeah. that's wonder where all the machineries come from. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the models that, that, uh, that work, right, it's right. the art that works. So, I mean, as you say, the, the 132nd diorama that's behind us at the moment, um, so that's telling a story about um, the, the 19th century, the, the intertribal the, the inter warfare. Yep. Um, so we've got a lot of that history here with artifacts and, <laughs> and items as well. Um, and then through on the other side, you've got a lot of life-size models with more later 19th century, early 20th century machinery, farm equipment, yep. and, and so on. Um, so were you building both of those sort of... Always of trying to tell time? stories that people can relate to. Right. You know, because um, you know, with people coming in, you get all sorts of wonderful stories about their family and yeah. things that they've heard, and you start to write them down. You start to, they just, you, we don't push it particularly hard. You just, after a while, they start gelling in your mind. Think, that is a story yeah. that should be told because people would be able to relate to it, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's storytelling. I mean, museums generally do this now. Um, more and more. Uh, to, yeah, to a lesser and greater extent. I mean, yeah, well, that's you, you, true. You've got the, the museum that are, that's telling the history, but then you've got those that are into the infotainment area yeah. almost, haven't you? So. Yeah, well, we do that. You know, with Traders and Whalers, it's very much a it's non it's a non artifact based right. um, ride right. into history so back that, at that, that time. That's your ride through. Yeah, the, I mean, yeah. we don't do it all like that, but yeah. I think there's, there's there's space for both both ways of telling. Right. Variations, the main thing. You yeah. know, different people relate to different things. So I, I, yeah, it's certainly walking around today, and it's been a couple of years since I was here last. Walking around, you you do have that variety. So yeah. family going to turn up here, completely different interests, but just about everybody's going to get something out of it. Absolutely, in one shape that's what we form. hope. Yeah. yeah. They, they can relate to it at some at some level. Yeah. Children, of course, that's always been difficult when you've sort of got an old building full of old junk, yeah. not interested. Yeah. But as soon as you can sort of put child figures in, sort of telling stories through a child's eyes, yeah. or even just having children figures in amongst all the others in yeah. some way, I mean, there was always children there in history, exactly. but how often do we actually tell their stories or tell it from their viewpoint? Yeah. And we try very hard to do that. And kids, we just hear them telling grandma and granddad that they're with and say, look, that boy's doing it, or the girl's doing it, what's going on? And like, oh, I see, he's going to threaten to put that teddy bear in the hay baler. And I mean, he doesn't notice the hay baler particularly as, a, as an artifact, no. but it's just, it's telling this little human mm, story, story. Yeah. of the boy threatening to put his sister's teddy bear in the hay baler yeah. or something, or the brother or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And it works, yeah. you know, yeah. because that's the level I'll get through when they come through at five or eight. But when they come through at 12 to 15, it's a different level I see again in, mm, the, yeah. in the stories. Yeah. And because there's adults that come through and see it completely differently. But that's what we try to do, is tell those stories so that they, people can relate to them at some level. Right, right. And that's the challenge. Um, certainly when I was here last it had been an even longer period since I'd been here before and, and the, the farm machinery aspect of the collection had grown considerably. Mm. Um, 
and I think you mentioned to me earlier on that even since then you've added a couple of sheds on here or there. So yeah. the collection, the, the displays are continuing to grow by the sound of it. Yes, unfortunately <laughs> they do. Of course machinery takes a lot of shed to house yeah. and, and costs and then once you've got, got them up, you've got maintenance. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a worry when you've sort of limited income coming in in terms of, you know, the only income is what comes in at the door. Oh, yeah. Um, but there are some things you just can't turn down. Yeah. You know, the Butler brothers with their hedge cutters and sweets yeah. um, were keen to sort of see them all put here yeah. and tell their story. And yeah. we're still doing that. There's still stuff to go on the wall. But you saw with the Meccano yeah. part of it, that was yep. part of that story. Yep. Again, to try and get kids to relate yep. to the, you know, they look at it. Oh, he's making a model of a, of a hedge cutter or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we've still got photographs and things to tell. and. Uh, trying to get, uh, but Lou's given me a lot of stuff that we're still sort of sorting through, and just there's so many stories there. Yeah, yeah. But what a story, you know, it's yeah. just it's unique. And the hedge cutters are unique too to yeah. this area. Right. So it's in in terms of the the history, a lot of it is South Taranaki history, isn't mm -hmm. it? So yep. people can come in here and actually find out. I think what, it all, what yeah, we're doing locally. Yeah, we don't. I don't think generally we try to tell the national story at all. Sometimes you have to to give, like to the musket wars, you have to give the national story of context yes. to sort of where it fitted in with what was going on in the rest of the country. Okay. So sometimes you do have that reference, yeah. but largely no. It's it's pretty much the local story yeah. and things that we hear and books that we read and and so on and try to make it interesting. Try yeah. and get people to engage with it. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Whether the kids or adults, try to get them engage at some level with yeah. what you're doing. Otherwise, it's pointless. Yeah. Well, I think you've done a great job here. I mean, certainly there's plenty of car parking out front. You've got Mr. Badger's Cafe here for people that want to Absolutely. stop over and have something to eat. You've got the shop. You've got knickknacks in there for the kids, and you've got some engagement for them. Yeah. So how, how often are you open? Is it a seven-day-a-week operation? Or? Well, we have three seasons. Winter, that's June, July, and August. Yeah. We're only open one day a week, Sunday. Right. The bulk of the year, we're open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, four days a week. Yeah. And then we do a short stint from Boxing Day to the end of January. We're seven days a week through those peak of summer. Right. Okay. So there are three seasons. So presumably all that details on your website. Yep. So we'll put that on the video for people to check out great. and have a look at. And next time you're in Taranaki to come over and take a look. Thank you very much. That's great. No worries. Excellent. Excellent.